How's it going my dudes? It's been a while since I did a whipped cream discussion and I feel like this is one of the best times to do so because of a couple of things. One, Nexon's been uh, pretty alarming lately with delayed content and a very disastrous timetable, which we'll talk about in a bit. Two, there is this ongoing rumor that the ties between Nexon and Identity are getting sour. Which I'm not really surprised with because if you can do your own research then you'd understand their track records as gaming companies. And lastly, they're so close-minded in terms of reaching out directly to the community and only limiting themselves to their Facebook page, which as of the moment feels so bland and dead. We kind of miss that witty moderator guy who replied to concerns and just memeing themselves out because they're basically aware of the situation but can barely do anything about it. Now, now, uh, where do I start? Ah, yes, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Uh, delayed content. When the game first launched, they were very, very aggressive with their content and marketing play that they drew a lot of attention and basically landed a smash hit of downloads and a solid player base count that envied a lot of mobile MMORPGs. When you pump out content to a consistent level, you actually get the benefit of players staying loyal to the game because they know that they have something to invest in their time and effort. Sadly, along the way we encountered numerous bugs and glitches that downright destroyed the game economy and slowly weeded out the game's potential. Because on a gamer's perspective, WAD's game model has what it takes to last years. And let's be honest here, the core mechanics of the game is absolutely fun. It's the best embodiment of the PC franchise so far and adds some new flavors into it that makes it a unique adaptation. They've done, or at least, tried solutions that were mostly flops, but that's the problem. Failing over and over would only result in a wider dissatisfaction that would ultimately test a loyal player's grit and wit, which, as you can see right now, isn't working out. Because every day, I see players from our server selling their accounts or just straight up quit. Guilds are now a mishmash of other guilds trying to survive the competitive landscape of guild wars and the only thing that's interesting in the Colosseum are 1v1s. Don't get me wrong, team matches are fun. If everyone moves. <laughs> if everyone just moves, right? And FFA would have been better if it didn't rely solely on kills but by performance. I mean, you did that for team matches. How hard can it be to apply it to free for all? There's just something cringy and disgusting about winning just by last hitting. I can go all day about the problems in the Colosseum, but that's not what we're here for. My point is, if players are already bored with the Colosseum, which is the culmination of everything that you farm for in a competitive level besides beating dungeons that are not hardcore, then that's the biggest sign that they should seriously pump out something new and fresh. I won't talk about the hardcore dungeons because the only thing that's holding it back is the schedule, which absolutely doesn't make sense at all. Now, all of these problems could have been mitigated if people weren't too focused on one aspect of the game, which leads me to Nexon and ED's delay in releasing content. I mean, you released the academic after two months since the game released, but now it's taking more or even double that? The most loyal players are already getting bored and it's not even a secret, guys. It's prevalent in all servers besides the new ones. The only positive thing that I can think of here is that Nexon's delaying everything until Identity can figure their shit out and give them a patch that's not riddled with tons of bugs. Which actually is an awesome idea if they'd also focus on giving their community something else to do while waiting for said patch. Like, I don't know, not put a fucking schedule on hardcore dungeons? Yeah, sounds like a fair idea, right? And please guys, don't get me started with automated events. We all know it's just there to kill your batteries with zero substance and interaction. You see, I've said this on my first Bit Cream discussion, which was ironically titled Is World of Dragon as Dying, and placed a lot of emphasis on player retention. If you cannot satisfy your most loyal players, then what makes you think you can satisfy a curious mind from trying and paying for your game? What, did Nexon's marketing team ask too much from ED's developers? Are you guys okay? Did your years of experience in game management and development flush along with your hopes and dreams? Am I being too mean? Which leads me to the second point of the discussion. The rumor is currently circulating that Nexon and Identity are having problems as partners. It's like having a toxic family and we all know where that goes. 
If two gaming giants cannot agree on the vision that they once stood up for, then we might as well call it a day because they're basically just waiting for their contracts to expire and would probably avoid renewing it. This rumor actually started when one of their Facebook moderators replied with an ominous statement that obviously felt like there was some trouble brewing internally. Now, if we pair that up with the current state of the game and put two and two together, the rumors are basically making sense. But at the end of the day, it's just all rumors and it's up to us to speculate. It's just that it's not going to help the fact that they're losing players every day though. Last but not the least is their arrogance to listen to the community that their players built with such passion, which honestly is the saddest among the three key issues in this discussion. To give you guys a better picture, let's start with a little background check from Mihoyo, one of the most successful gaming developers and publishers in the industry. Now, if any of you have played Honkai Impact 3rd, then chances are you're aware as to how they constantly reach out to the community and let players criticize their content, which, to their credit, gets updated almost right away or even after a couple of days. That's the kind of community building that makes their game relevant until now. I cannot stress how important it is to reach out to the community as this makes the player base feel important and relevant. When you give your players a chance to shape the game they know and love, then you've already gained their trust and loyalty. They may not please everyone, but at least they are winning the hearts of the majority. Now by contrast, let's look at Nexon, which by role is responsible for spearheading community outreaches and events. Did you notice anything lately? Exactly. See that little thing on the screen? That's probably the only time they reached out to us and guess what happened? It yielded a lot of great things. For a time, that is. From quality of life changes to more challenging nests, that survey form allowed players to interact directly in the game's development and boosted their numbers. Again, for a while. I just don't understand why both companies stopped doing it as it was a step to the right direction. But instead, they're giving us cold feet like that one ex-girlfriend you had back in high school. What, did the PR team just drop off an abandoned ship? Is it hard to make survey forms nowadays? Or is identity actually falling on deaf ears? See, content creators like Masterwell have tried reaching out directly to them but to no avail. The community is literally opening their doors, guys, so that you can all work together to solve bugs by reporting it right away or discussing how the bug operates. But no, they're probably busy with other things besides, you know, maintaining a game that gives them income and preserving the integrity of their franchise. Yeah, anyone? Ding dong? An experienced game publisher like Nexon or a veteran developer like Identity shouldn't be a stranger to the process of customer satisfaction equals better income. If the game is truly dead to their eyes, that they are barely showing any effort of getting it damn right, then I'm here to tell you that maybe it's not too late. Sure, you may need to market it again, but if there's anything that's equally powerful to paid ads or marketing stunts, it's actually by word of mouth to not underestimate the power of word of mouth. And a satisfied community has what it takes to help you guys get back on your knees. And at the end of the day, we can all agree that besides the game's bugs and problems, it was the guildmates. <laughs> what, the, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> I can't even fucking hit you. Friends, enemies, late night server chat dramas, exciting guild wars and failed nest runs. Oh no! <laughs> Guys, don't leave me! <laughs> <laughs> that actually made the game worthwhile. I'm sure you've encountered one of these as a player and you may have a funny memory so yeah, I'm gonna tell you to just hang on to that memory and keep the friends you made along the way. Thank you so much for tuning into this discussion. It's really sad to see the state of the game right now, uh, where most of the players I know are quitting because of that time and space bug. They just acknowledged that problem, but, well, little did they know that I was already there for a month. Well, sad. Sad times indeed. But for now, peace out, y'all. Be nice, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.